Shalom. <laughs> so, um, off work. Well, I was at work. It was pretty slow today. I don't know if it's because I'd have just been wreaking havoc on the whole eastern side of the United States or what, but it was pretty slow today. So I had a lot of time to sit and talk to Abba. And one of the things he was talking to me about was the fact that, so he called me to a place. I came to the place and then everything that could possibly go wrong in that place went wrong. <clears throat> now, this is the first time I had ever really stepped out on faith in a very major way. But let me tell you about my dude, man. Let me tell you about Abaya and like how nothing that we think is ever what he's doing. <laughs> I promise you. Like today I was at work just like praising him for what the world would deem a failure on my behalf. So with the moratorium being lifted, everybody everywhere is having a hard time finding a place to stay. For me, I make good money. I have good credit, but it's just been hard. And I've come across a lot of people that have been staying at my hotel because <laughs> they don't have a place to stay. I'm talking about people that have better credit than me that make more money than I do or are retired and still make more money than I do. Like people that shouldn't be in this position. So I just know the economy sucks right now. So it did actually make me feel better, like knowing that I stepped out on faith. And if the economy hadn't been so retarded, perhaps I would have succeeded until <laughs> I was started talking. And he said, you're still not looking at it the way I'm looking at it. So this is what he started speaking to me. First of all, he Reminded me of Matiyahu, which is Matthew 14, 22 to 33. That is when Yeshua was walking on the water. His Talmudim saw him walking on the water. And then Kepha was like, yo, Lord, if that's you, then call me and I'll come to you. Yada, yada, yada. We all know the rest of the story. So one of the things that he started saying to me, because he likes to, he likes to get me to think. That That's how he speaks to me. He, he. He poses a lot of what ifs. Of course, we know that he is absolute. Everything he does is absolute. But it's his way of getting me to think. What if I called you out on the water and all you got met with was a storm that I was in? <laughs> what if me calling you out was simply to put you, I'm um, simply to get you to let go of your last ounce of comfort? which in the story of Kepha walking on water was the boat. What if nothing material was gained from you stepping out on faith, but you gain tremendously spiritually? What if calling you out was simply to bring you closer to me? Would you still go? <laughs> then he told me, he said, I'm refocusing you. I'm humbling you, but I'm still walking with you. Then he reminded me of Yohanan 3 and 8, where it talks about how um, the Holy Spirit is like the wind that blows. No one knows from where it comes from or where it goes. And so are all the children of Yahua. Like, if you're a child of Yahua, you basically move like the wind. Like, no one knows where you came or where you're going, but yeah, go read it. So he says, um, then he started talking to me about how leaves blow in the wind like if a if a leaf falls from a tree it starts blowing in the wind he said it's free flowing it has nothing to hold on to or to anchor it down and it's fluid like water and then he he posed the question he said are you movable because we know that we're supposed to stand firm on the word of Yahweh, but are you movable meaning can he move you like when he when he says, okay, I know you're making $80,000 a year, quit that job and go work at Burger King. Are you movable? When you're living in a seven bedroom house with six bathrooms, three car garage with a whole staff that cleans it and waits on you from hand to foot. And he tells you, get rid of that and become a nomad, like living from hotel to hotel. Will you? And I know it's always the extreme of losing something and whatnot, but 
I mean, think about it. This is the exact same thing that the, the exact same thing that he posed to the rich young ruler that was bragging about how he had upheld all of the commandments from childhood. And he was like, bet. So how about this? All that stuff you got, go sell it to the poor, then come holla at me. And old dude was like, see you tripping now. Like, <laughs> anybody say all that? Like, you said thou shalt not murder. I ain't murdered. You say I shouldn't lie. I ain't lied. You don't say it like, dude, I, what you talking about? So, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> then he said that, you know, through these things, he develops a servant's heart in us. But servants are taken care of by their master, him being the master. And in all of this, you're learning to let go. And he's creating peace within us. Think about it. Paul said that he had plenty and he had little, but in everything, he learned to have contentment. He learned to be content no matter what his circumstances were. So all that Ruach HaKodesh was saying to me today was, are you able to continue following me if it doesn't look like what you think it's supposed to look like or what you thought it was going to look like? Are you able to follow me when you're constantly losing instead of gaining? With no sign of gaining in the future. Like, will your yes still be yes? Because we say yes so hastily, especially when what I've learned with Yahuwah is he will tell us where he's taking us in the next seasons to come. But then the seasons leading up to those seasons is our preparation. So in the seasons of preparation, that's where... <laughs> that's why that's where we find out who was giving him lip service and who truly meant it in their heart because when he starts putting you through those tests it's like wow okay so when you said that we have to die to ourselves daily and pick up our cross and follow you like you meant for real for real like that wasn't okay okay so when you said that I have to hate my mother and my father and my brother and my sister and so on and so forth in order to be your disciple. Like, you meant that for real, for real. And mind you, he doesn't mean hate as in you dislike the person. He means that you have to be so detached from everyone and everything that when he tells you to go, your connection to them is not going to keep you from obeying his command. Like, that's what he means by hate. Not the hate that we mean like man I, hate, I can't stand her I hate her not that type of hate so yeah like would you go is your yes still going to be yes the whole purpose of him moving me I thought was to prosper me <laughs> like because I had been going through for five years I mean longer than that but the worst of it was the past five years so naturally, you know, I wanted, I wanted to come up a little bit. I mean, I ain't trying to be, you know, famous or nothing. But, you know, I wanted to live a, a, a more comfortable life. And he said, no, 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 no. Your future is a future of discomfort. As a matter of fact, he spoke through his son <laughs> at a church service that I went through while his son was praying over me and said, you're going to have to get comfortable being, dis being uncomfortable. Like, and it's one of those, yeah, okay, gotcha, I'm already uncomfortable. I got this. And he's like, oh, baby, you ain't seen uncomfortable. Like, let me let me show you uncomfortable. <laughs> but here's the thing. I'm sitting here laughing and joking about it right now. Because when he started speaking this to me today, it's like, okay, okay. So none of this is what I really think it is. Like, this is, this is. His, his ways are higher. His thoughts are higher. I'm trying to tell you. Like, we we assume what he means. We assume what he's doing. <laughs> we don't know that. <laughs> we don't know. I'm trying to tell you, we don't know anything. Like, dude. Dude. When he said that today, I was like, you know what? I felt like a superhero. Like, I could go conquer the whole world after he finished saying that to me. Like, I thought I was over here failing miserably. He's like, no, like <laughs> that wasn't even the point of, of, of me calling you. I just, he said, I called you to me to show you if you really meant your yes. If you really meant yes, when you said yes to me. 
then I allowed a lot of those things to happen to you to see if you still meant yes. Well, to show you if you still meant yes. And I'm still here kicking. <laughs> I'm still here, so I ain't, I ain't walked away yet. I'm still saved, y'all. I'm still saved. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. That's it. And in another video, he had me to say, you know, to inspect your armor. Ephesians 6, uh, 10 to 18. Like, make sure you're inspecting your armor. Because a lot of us have kinks in our armor right now. A lot of us are putting down our sword, which is his word. A lot of us aren't holding our, our shield of faith up. A lot of us have dropped our salvation so we get attacked mentally. Like, we're not, we're not tending to our armor. Like, inspect your armor, man. All right. Got more talking to do. <laughs> Love you. It's still um, Rosh Hashanah until sundown tomorrow. So, Shana Tova. And I love you guys, and Shalom Aleichem.